What's up, military millionaires? Today, I want to take a moment to discuss the 11 things that you need to know in order to create a very successful podcast. Now, let's dive right in. Psych! You should subscribe to the channel first. All right, now, intro. Look, the biggest mistake I made when first starting was not understanding that my audience wanted to listen to my podcast guests instead of me. So I would find myself talking entirely too much and explaining things to the audience rather than saying to the guest, you mentioned X, Y, and Z. Could you please explain that to my audience real quickly in case they are unfamiliar with that acronym or something like that, right? Letting the guest explain what they meant instead of you trying to. You wanna make your guest look like the rock star, not you. Determine the main takeaways from the audience. You should have an idea of the journey you wanna take your listeners down and the transformation that they will achieve by listening to your show and following the advice you give. For example, the main takeaway that I want my audience to get is you can do it too. My guests are service members or veterans who have figured out how to build wealth through whether it's real estate investing or entrepreneurship or personal finance or, or whatever, right? They came from the same beginnings, humble beginnings, and they have done it too. So the goal of my show is to help light the way to success for younger service members. With knowledge, discipline, and hard work, you can achieve financial freedom and be able to exit the military without worrying about where your next paycheck will come from. See, so there's like a unified theme there and I put everything through that lens. Next, you need to figure out what makes your podcast bingeable and unique. So you need to figure out what makes you and your show uniquely relatable to them and then double down on that to ensure that your audience gets a lot out of it. The more you embrace your own strengths, and your personality, the more people will listen. So the more unique and unifying your voice is behind your personal cause, the better. The thing that makes my podcast binge listenable is that every guest gives actionable advice to follow. So the Military Millionaire podcast showcases service members and veterans who have been able to build a business using the skills they've acquired in the military and they're achieving financial freedom. We do release bonus episodes as well, and that's when you feature uh, like celebrity entrepreneurs or, or, or real estate investors or, or successful investors or whatever, even though they may not have been in the military. So for my niche, all my Friday episodes are service members and vets, but occasionally I have a bonus episode with someone who wasn't, but is very successful. My podcast is unique because our audience is all low and middle class employees. Service members don't really get paid a ton, but they make up for that with planning, tenacity, resourcefulness. And if you can invest in real estate or build a business as an active duty service member, as I have and many others in the community, anybody can do it. The thing that makes me special as a host is that I am an active duty Marine. I have recorded content as early as three in the morning and before work and as late as 2200 or 10 at night before bed and sometimes like late at night and early the next morning. So people resonate with this because they know that I'm not sitting in a cushy office and I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth, right? I represent the everyday W-2 employee who is working a job during the day and a hustle in the mornings and evenings. So that's like what makes me unique and my show unique. If you can figure that out, it will really help you out. Then you need to determine a blueprint for making a successful podcast. This could be as simple as asking people to smash the like button. It's not actually it, but it would help the video if you did. Your podcast needs to add value to everybody who listens. It needs to be informational, educational, or entertaining. And if you can combine these components, even better. The blueprint I would give is very simple. Use your networking ability to get incredible guests on your show. Then make your guests out to be rock stars on your podcast and ask thoughtful questions to bring extremely great insights to your guests. Make sure that the podcast is very easy for your guests to share to their audience. Make them want to share it by providing quotes, audiograms, tweetable texts, you know, like you click on it and it's an instant tweet or whatever, and then make them look and sound incredible. So the bigger the sphere of influence that your guests have and the more that they share, the more of their audience will begin to listen to your show. So you need to focus on adding value to your listeners. If they get something out of your show, they are more than likely going to share it. This, like everything else, is a people business and word of mouth is extremely powerful. So the five things that will make your podcast successful are that you need to be authentic. Be you. Don't try to be anybody else. It is okay if you aren't a subject matter expert as long as you're transparent about it. 
and you position yourself as the person who started a podcast to learn from experts rather than as the expert, if that makes sense. But if you are the expert, then be authentic and share the good and bad things that you've experienced. Number two, talk less and listen more. The goal is to make your guests look like rock stars, not yourself. If you focus on making yourself look good, your show will not take off, right? They are there for the guests. Number three, find your niche. Don't just start the business podcast, unless you are the business expert. Instead, dive into a smaller niche like the Bar Managers podcast, which is just a random one that I came up with, but that's very specific to a niche in business. So if you're starting out, you need to focus on a smaller niche to gain traction. You can always broaden your scope later on. Number four, network with other podcasters and experts in your field. So do podcast interview swaps, go on other podcasts as well, and then you'll get exposed to their audience, and the more exposure will help bring some listeners back to your podcast and help their, theirs grow. And obviously share it, because that's what you would want. A rising tide raises all ships, so you will benefit from this as well as they will. And number five, listen to your audience. You need to poll your audience and ask what they would like to see more of or how you can improve, and then listen to what your audience likes and dislikes. Bring people from your audience into the show and build a community around it. For example, I call the people in my show Military Millionaires. And I start each show with, what's up Military Millionaires? And something to that effect. Bringing your community together around a unified cause is huge, right? That's key to brand. Now, the best way to book great guests is to network with rock stars in your industry. And then ask them, who, who do you know that would make a great guest for my podcast? When you have experts recommending other experts, you get excellent guests. And as a pro tip, ask them to send an introductory email to the person they recommended, and this adds credibility and boosts your chances of them agreeing to be on the show. I have made several valuable connections through these introductory emails, and some of my biggest podcast guests have come from this. In fact, that's how I got on the Joe Fairless show, was my buddy Alex had been a guest. I asked him if he knew anyone else. He was cool enough to recommend me, and then I was on the guest, and then I got to recommend a few people, although <laughs> everybody I recommended had already been on the show. But Look, the best way to increase listeners is focus on adding value to your audience. Make it shareable and interact with your fans to create super fans, as Pat Flynn calls them in his new book. My most popular podcast to date is one that resonated with my fans and answered one of their big questions. What if I don't have the money to get started in real estate investing? Now, this episode has been shared a lot, and the gentleman, has a, he has a decent following, but he's not by any means the biggest following that I've had on my channel. So look, the best way to produce your show professionally, audio is the most important piece of the puzzle. So you should record separate audio tracks for each guest, and that way you can allow the edit the volume so that if one's louder than the other, you can tweak that and the background noise in each track. You need to ensure that your guest has fast internet. Have them shut down other applications, Windows browsers, or kids playing YouTube in the background on their computer. Definitely includes turning off streaming services where they, or you know, when they're recording, whatever. You need to have decent lighting and an organized backdrop. Those are critical if you want to record videos too, right? You should have at least something clean, right? So you need to hire somebody to clean up your audio and edit your shows as you grow because it just takes time. So that way you can ensure they're clean and you can remove unnecessary pauses and pet words such as um, ah, or so. And personally, I did all of this the hard way for the first year. Then I hired somebody to help me produce my show, and now I actually partnered with them to start the Veteran Media Services, which we handle everything from launching a new show and doing intros, outros, to editing and doing audiograms and video editing and, and posting it on. We can even schedule on YouTube and your podcast and social media. Look, I wish I had done this from the very beginning. So if you're interested, let me know. It, it will save you a ton of time. Now, the best way to encourage engagement is to share your podcast episodes everywhere that your audience might be. Also, be active in forums, Facebook groups, and other areas where your target audience hangs out. Now, focus on adding value and building relationships. Over time, these people will befriend you, they'll check out your podcast and share it with others, and because you focus on the people more than just the production, they will come, right? Like They, they will like your community. Now, the best way is to monetize your show. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do this. I have refer referral programs and sponsors that have paid well. So I like the idea of monetizing by referring people to friends I do business with because it creates a win-win-win situation for everyone involved, right? 
I get a commission, my buddy gets business, and the other person is connected with someone that I know and trust. So these are great because you have no downside, and the upside for you and the sponsor are huge. Now, I prefer these relationships to a set dollar amount for placing an advertisement on my show, but you can do that too. You can also upload to YouTube and make some money through their ad revenue. You gotta have a decent amount of followers. It's, it's not much when you start out. But if your show gains traction, it can definitely be something, right? Uh, and then you should create an, a movement, right? Having an audience is great, but having a cause is way better. The movement I am working on is the military millionaire, hashtag military millionaire movement. My community is aimed at helping service members learn how to build wealth, real estate investing, entrepreneurship, and personal finance. You're probably sick of hearing that, but that's it. We help service members learn how to build wealth and we are helping them prepare for a smooth transition out of the military, whether they do four years or 40 years. And we help them build a purpose for themselves outside of the military. The byproduct of giving service members a sense of purpose outside of the military and a strong financial background is that it will dramatically cut down on the veteran suicide rate. Veterans really struggle with losing their identity and, and with finding a purpose after their service ends. And if we can help them avoid this, we can save lives. And we will save lives. So, bottom line is this, guys. Plan out what your podcast wants to look like. Get great guests. Make it easy for them to share. Make them look like a rock star so they want to share. Be relatable to your audience. Unify around a cause. And just build relationships. And people will come to your show and they will like it. So that's all I got for the day. If you got something out of this, please subscribe, hit that little like button, and uh, I don't know, go crush some goals or something.